welcome to the Karami Jal Show. On today's show, we have a relationship that's lasted for the past 50 years, but finally the cracks are starting to show. In January 1973, Britain joined the European community and two years later embraced the opportunity to join in a referendum. However, there's been growing discontent and we are here today to see whether we can patch up the trust issues between these two. First to fight their corner is the UK, claiming that the European Union have taken too much of their fundamental national sovereignty and have too much control over their laws. Welcome, the UK. Sat down now. I hate you! I feel like you're exploiting my vulnerability and uncodified constitution. You still give Germany 86% of your decision-making powers, why can't I have them more? I don't mean it, they're only minor regulations and you still make all the major decisions in this relationship. Without me, you would have no national influence, increasingly ignored by Washington, especially on issues such as the environment, security and trade. This is what happened when I caught up with a local expert. Uh, it's very important that we offer a market of 250 million rather than a market of, of 60 million um, in the UK. So it's an, I think it's important economically to stay in Europe. We've had a thousand years of war between Spain, England, France uh, and Germany um, and the last 70 years of Europe we haven't. There must be a reason why Europe is working. In the 1990s, you embarrassed me in front of all of my friends by compromising my sovereignty. When my own laws conflicted yours, you were more superior and willing to disregard my well-being. Norway and Switzerland have done well enough without you. Why can't I? Okay, you also claim that the EU is responsible for a lot of immigrants in this country. What do you think of this? I don't like you forcing your friends on me. Net migration into the UK increased by more than 38% to 243,000 between 2013 and 2014. I don't have the resources and public services to support this. EU citizens accounted for more than two-thirds of this growth. Well, that's all well and good, but what do the experts say? We're a, we're a great nation that needs to be independent. We need to control our trade, we need to control who, and quality and quantity, which is the key part, the quality and quantity of who comes into the country. Um, but for right now, for the whole of the state of the Union, we need to be a collective of individual states, because that's what made us great. Mm. For jobs, for prosperity and for peace, it's better to be in than, be than out, and therefore I'd say be in. Okay. And to have access to the biggest free market gives us access to be able to sell our goods and services to, to other people. So on balance, and there are lots of things that are wrong with the EU, but on balance, it's the right thing to do and it produces jobs and it produces prosperity. If you leave me, millions of UK jobs could be lost as manufacturers move to lower cost EU countries. If we have a divorce, you won't see the end of me. Your exports will still be subject to EU export tariffs, and you would still have to meet EU production standards. I also spoke to a friend of the UK. Everyone says it can be changed, it can be changed. It cannot really be changed. You can change various little aspects that mean nothing. Any renegotiation will be a sham. Uh, I, I've spoken to Jean-Claude Juncker. He came to meet us uh, and I asked him point blank, is it possible to renegotiate freedom of movement? As uh, David Cameron has said, he said that is not possible. Well, the DNA test results are in. Well, well, well. Opinion polls showed that in 2010, 44% of people would stay in the EU, whereas only 36% would leave. I think you two need to renegotiate your terms and think what you really want from this relationship. Thank you very much for watching the Karami Giles Show. Thank you, good night.